can I make a D&D &D ornament that looks good and costs basically nothing to make? Let's find out this week. Happy holidays, everyone. My name is Garmin, this is Connor, and this is the Storycraft Society. And this week, I am going to be trying something a little bit holiday themed. The holiday that my family chooses to celebrate is Christmas. So therefore, I thought it would be fun to make some kind of holiday themed Dungeons and Dragons ornament. Now, we're not just doing that. The part B to this, and I don't know how doable this is going to be, but I wanted to try and do it for as cheap as possible. What is the fewest amount of cents that I can spend to end up with an awesome looking ornament for on my tree? So with that said, I decided to drive down to my local Dollar General. I pulled in and started to browse through the shelves and I was looking for two things in particular. One, I knew I was going to need foam core and two, I was going to look for something that would be a cheap, inexpensive way to mount said ornament onto the tree, some kind of cording or string. And of course, I found both of those pretty easily. So we ended up with this. Really awesome, they were a dollar a piece. What the heck? I just checked my receipt and it was 318. This was supposed to be $2. I got charged for some nonsense Christmas red black check, whatever that is. It was only a dollar, no big deal. All right. Today has been filled with the loudest trucks in history. I don't know if, look at, look, do you see it? I tried to film this intro like six times and the loudest trucks in history come by. So if there's loud trucks, sorry. All right, and rant. It's Christmas, follow la 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 la. With that said, let's head back to the house and start trying to make this ornament. Let's go. So I started out by printing a D&D logo in the basic size that I thought I would need it. And then I cut out an octagon. I don't know, I thought it was kind of like, you know, die shaped, sorta, out of an old trashed Cheez-It box. I didn't measure these out or anything. I just kind of eyed it and thought about the size that I generally wanted. There's a little bit of a crafting tip for you. Everything doesn't have to be measured out and perfect to end up looking good at the end. Next, I broke out my dollar store foam core. I sliced off a piece, peeled the paper backing off, and began slicing up my bricks. My plan was to use the cardboard as backing for the ornament and then use the little foam core bricks to glue them on and make kind of a brick face texture for the ornament. Then the D&D symbol will set on top of that. So I needed to cut up a bunch of these bricks in order to get them eventually glued down. So I cut them up. Again, I just eyed it here to get a general guess of what size I thought I would need and then slice them again the other direction to get the final bricks. Now with the bricks all cut out, I will send it back to past Garmin who will give you a little on the scene action. All right, so to get our bricks all, ooh, they're blown all over the place. All right, so to get our bricks all textured up, what we're going to do is use the coffee can technique. So for those who don't know, is we're going to be taking a coffee can or a coffee plastic container, whatever you want to call it, and we're going to fill that up with little just tiny gravel or stones. Then we're going to put all of our foam bricks in there and we're going to tumble it and shake it up like crazy. That's going to get stone texture imprinted all over our little foam bricks. And what's really nice about this is it gives a nice even coating over the whole thing and it's really quick to do. So with that knocked out, we're gonna move on to gluing the bricks down. Thanks Pass Garmin for the amazing summary. I like this bit, it's pretty funny. <laughs> Uh, now to glue the bricks down, I decided to use hot glue. There's a lot of benefits to hot glue, like it dries fast and it's really easy to use. The only issue with it is that it is tedious. You've got to go brick by brick. There's no putting just a layer of glue down and then just dropping bricks over and over and over again. So in this step, I had to put glue on a brick, glue it down, put glue on a brick, glue it down. And that can take a little while. My best advice here is just get stuck in, pull up YouTube or something, have 
videos playing in the background that you can listen to and just glue, glue, glue until you get the entire face done. It doesn't take that long and while you're listening to something, it just makes the time go a little faster. Now for the way that I'll hang the ornament, I pulled out that cord that I got from the dollar store and I'm gonna cut off a piece of that. Again, I just eyeballed it to see how far I wanted the ornament to hang down and then I'm gonna be using that to hang the ornament. Just like everything else, I used hot glue to attach it. I put hot glue on the back and then I used my finger to smash it down as much as possible. That's the real trick here. You want that cord where it connects to the cardboard to be absolutely as flat as you can get it. That way it doesn't make your bricks stand up any on the front. But with that said, I got that all glued in and I was ready to finish up my bricks. Just a little bit more work there and I had the whole face done. Now you'll notice that I let the bricks all run wild on the face here and that is on purpose because the amount of annoyance that it would take to cut all of the bricks to the size that you need would take forever. Once you have it like this, you can just flip it over, use that cardboard as a straight edge and then use your craft knife to shave all of those edges off. Really fast to do and it ends up looking just fine. Now with the stonework done on the front of my piece, it was time to put some kind of a border around it to frame it up. Since I had stone texture already on the face, I was going to use a wood texture around the outside. Now in order to make this foam simulate wood, I'm gonna end up using a plastic wire brush to do a texture on it. You can just dig that wire brush in and it leaves this awesome wood grain texture behind. One little tip that I'll give is sometimes when you're working at this small of a scale, it's actually easier to make foam look like wood more than to make wood look like wood, which is a real mind bending thing. It's just that sometimes it's easier to put the wood texture into the foam where the wood ends up looking too perfect, maybe a little fake, which is just an interesting thing about crafting at this small of a scale. So then with all of my wood strips done, I began hot gluing them onto the piece. This wasn't so difficult, it was just I glued for one of the little octagon faces, let the glue cool all the way. That's important because you don't want it pulling up on you. Then you can just bend that joint. The foam bends in a way that real wood wouldn't and it allows you to just kind of bend that into place and then glue the next step, bend it into place and glued the next step. Now I repeated that the whole way around the outside and then the base of the ornament was done and it was time to move on to the hard part. The most challenging step of this project by far is putting the D&D symbol up onto the face here. So the way that I decided to do that was I pulled out my D&D symbol, a piece of foam core and a very sharp pencil. Now what I did here was I traced around the outside of the pieces of the symbol and that left a dent in the foam core. Now once I had it done, I did retrace all of the lines with a pencil again, but that was just because the camera was having trouble picking up the dents. Honestly, the dent dented effect really doesn't change. So it's a really nice way to get an exact copy of your symbol right onto the foam. Now to make life easier for myself, I put a new blade onto my craft knife. That just makes it glide a little bit easier through the foam. And then I began to very carefully start to trace those lines out. Now I have two tips for this step. The first one is please go slow. You will mess it up if you try to go fast. Just go slow. It seems like you're wasting time in the moment, but when you leave it without making any mistakes, then it all feels worth it. Just go slow. Number two is to make sure that you keep your craft knife as vertical as possible. One way that you can kind of mess this up without realizing you're messing it up is to take that craft knife and cut at an angle. And then when you pop your piece out, you realize that you don't have a straight up and down line, but you have like a diagonal line in certain places, which doesn't look so great. So go slow and make sure you keep that knife vertical. So I just repeated this step with the three other pieces and then got to set them all out and look at them. And they looked so cool. I was so pleased with this at this step. It was a little bit of a nuisance being really careful and going slow and cutting all that out. But once I saw them sitting out on my craft table, I could not have been more excited. With one dry run, just to put it on the piece and make sure that everything fit and decide where I wanted to put it, I then began hot gluing it down and I had the entire piece put together. Finally, the sculpt was done and it was time to move on to paint. 
The first step in my painting process is always to put Black Magic Craft base coat over the whole piece. Now, if you don't know what that is, it is a 50-50 mixture of matte Mod Podge and black acrylic craft paint. Not only does this strengthen up your foam, but it also gives you a pre-black undercoat that allows you to paint up from when you begin putting your regular paints on. So once I got that put over the entire piece, front and back, I did everything except for the cord, then it was time to move on to the regular paint. Now in this video, Video, I'm gonna quickly go over my painting process, but if you want a more detailed explanation, I'll be sure to link down in the description below my Lazy Crafter's Guide to Painting Terrain. That is gonna be a much more in-depth tutorial where I explain all of the techniques that I used for painting this thing up. But anyway, back to the painting. So what I did was a three-step process for my stone, all of them grays. I started with a charcoal gray, followed that up with a pewter gray, and ended it with an elephant gray. For for the charcoal gray, I watered it down and made sure to give it all an even coat. The next thing that I did was that pewter gray, and I did that with an overbrushing with a slightly wet brush. This is my mid-tone, so it takes up the majority of the visual space. And then the final thing that I did was a dry brushing over the top of the elephant gray. This is just to grab the highest highlights and to give a visual depth to the stone. Next, I moved on to the wood texture. So the way that I painted that up was almost the exact same process, except I used a burnt umber, a brown, and then a coffee latte. I'm gonna start that off by using a super watered down burnt umber all over the wood. The next thing that I'm going to do is do an overbrushing, a wet brush overbrushing of the brown all over the wood. And lastly, I'm gonna do a coffee latte, only grabbing the tops of that wood grain so it really pops and grabs the eye. With those two things done, I only had one thing left to do, and that was paint the D&D symbol, and this was the most gratifying part of the whole painting process, crafting process, whatever you want to call it. As I put that cherry red paint on, it just made the whole piece come together and really really grab your eye. One thing that I will say is that I did do three coats of this cherry red just so I made sure that I got all of the nooks and crannies and that red really popped to grab the eye. So. With that said, I had an ornament. So let's jump to the outro and talk about how much it cost for me to make this thing. All right, so disclaimer to start this thing off. I am not including any of the tools that I used in this build as part of the price. So the way that I'm seeing that is if you're already a crafter, you'll have these things lying around. And if you're not, it's not outrageously expensive to get a hot glue gun, get some craft paints from like Walmart. These are just like the 50 cent bottles of craft paint, a paintbrush, that sort of thing. It will add a cost to this. This is just in the materials that I personally spent in order to build this ornament. So I bought a dollar sheet of foam core and I only used about a 16th of it. So that works down to being about six cents. And then I used the cord and I used less than a foot of it. So a negligible amount of that cord. In fact, I actually measured out, it says it's four yards of the cord and I measured out four yards. So they must give you a little bit extra and that's the only amount that I used. The next thing is an uncountable amount of Mod Podge, an uncountable amount of paint and an uncountable small number of hot glue. And that's all I used on the project, I think, obviously, if I miss something, correct me in the comments below. But the end result of that is that basically I spent about plus or minus 10 cents or so in materials to make this ornament. That's a win in my book. I mean, my goals were to make it look good and I certainly think that it looks good. My other goal was to do it for cheap and I can't imagine doing it for much cheaper than that. With that said, tell me what you think. Is there something that I missed here? Is there a way that I could have made it cheaper? Is there something that I could have done to maybe cut some tools out to even not use those? I'd be interested to hear what your thoughts are, but with that said, all I can say is thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed making it. If you enjoyed the video, definitely leave me a like down below and a comment to say hi. Share this video with someone you think would enjoy it. That is the best way to help a small YouTube channel grow. And subscribe if you haven't. We've got a lot of cool content on this channel. If you enjoy making stuff, we make a lot of stuff. If you enjoy Dungeons and Dragons, we do a lot more of that. But other than that, all I can say for this week is happy holidays, everyone. And until next week, I'll be seeing you.